Well, hey, welcome back to the uh, garage. Another little history thing today, and uh, it's actually on electronic ignition, but it's not what you think. Chrysler really didn't come to market first with it. Strange, I know. But let's go back to what really happened then. See, before the 1960s, points ignitions were everything. They were the only game in town. I mean, they had developed single and dual point to help give more power to the coil to actually end up giving more power to, you know, spark plugs. But still, it was a wear item because it was mechanical. And I'll show you right here. I have a, I have a set of actual points that I just have laying around. These are like lubricated rubbing block. See that it's lubricated. See the points are very simple. What they do is they have a little cam on the distributor moves the little contact point and you adjust that contact point with this screw here and it changes the distance. And it's like like 20 thousandths or something like that. It's, usually it's a matchbook. A matchbook cover works really, really well. I mean, it's very simple, but it does wear because this is constantly going around rubbing on the uh, distributor. And then you have this piece here that's arcing, you know, pretty high voltage across, you know, to tell, to tell the, the coil of the fire. So it's just very much. And then, of course, you have a condenser, which is a little capacitor. You know, these, like any capacitor, it just over time wears out. This is where the, the high point of the energy was being stored in between the, the rotations and also it made it so it, it closed faster by sapping away the extra power. So that was kind of where we were. They came out with some um, transistorized ignition systems and they were race only. And the advantage of these systems is that they use like an amplifier for the points to give more juice to the spark plugs. And it was used in NASCAR and drag racing. But for regular automotive use, it really wasn't practical. It just wasn't practical at all. Everybody was working on trying to get rid of these points. Ford really just came up with an amplified point system in the 60s. It really wasn't that great. Uh, Chrysler really was just using that amp. It wasn't trying anything for the street cars at this point and was just using the amplified system on the race cars. General Motors, though, with uh, Delco and Remy, were working really hard on trying to get rid of points. So the first system they came up with was created by Richard Canopa. It was a uh, patent filed in 63, got it in 66. It was a very different system. It was a transistorized ignition system that differed from the Chrysler system in that it had more parts to it. But the one thing it did have, though, is it gave more power over time to the, the spark plugs, and it actually increased distance of tune-up times because with points, it was at maximum 10,000 miles. Now, the basic operation of this system was pretty simple in theory. Uh, the distributor would spin a vane past a magnetic pickup, that would have a small electric charge to an external amplifier, like a little box, that would then send the signal to a special coil. It's like more like the square coils that came much later, not the round ones, but like the square ones, which actually HEIs use the same type of square one. And this was done really quickly, and the power drop off was much less as RPM went on. So it the car was able to have a higher sustained RPM with less misfires. Now it was offered for Pi Pontiac first in the 389 and the 421, their performance engines, and then the Corvette in 1964 as an option. Again, John DeLorean beat GM brass with the high performance option. He, he, he did that a few times. But unlike the later Chrysler units, it was still relying on the power passing through the the actual distributor to fire the coil with the amplifier and the amplifiers were not made the best see they were they were put together with transistors on the inside 
And then they had like a backing put on them. At first, there was no gasket. It was just a great. And then they had a small gasket, which eventually failed. So what happened, moisture would get into these things, and especially the original runs of these, and ruin them. Because moisture and transistors are not a great combination. Now, I have the schematic for it here. And it's pretty complicated compared to points or the later ignition systems. There's a lot of fail points and a lot of things you have to really check with the wiring because remember this wiring is going across different parts of the car it's not all encapsulated in a little area also the coil though not super expensive was still specialized and not every part part store would have this specialized coil that actually started fading but it was still used by the corvette up until 1971 go figure that one out but General Motors wasn't done developing. In 67, they came out with another system. In 1967, General Motors came out with another system. It was a capacitor discharge ignition system, or CDI for short. The capacitor stored 300 to 400 volts. So when the points, points closed on it, or the magnetic pickup triggered it, went on the distributor, it would tell then this capacitor to discharge, it would discharge to 300 to 400 volts to the coil, which would then magnify it 10 times, 100 times to 30,000 to 40,000 volts and fire a spark plug. It was actually very powerful and engines were able to rev much higher on this system, being that it was giving a consistent 30,000 30, to 40,000 volts all the way through the RPM range. The previous systems, because you're relying just on a coil, you, the coil couldn't recover as quickly, especially with it being an amplifier, and so it, the power would drop off dramatically as you got to higher RPMs. Now, this system was used in Oldsmobiles and Pontiacs in 1967 to 1969, and it was kind of just faded away because it was very complicated it had, you know, the capacitors were fail points because capacitors just don't last very long. It really didn't make any good use on a low performance engine. It was only good for high performance engines that needed to burn rich fuel loads. So it just went off in the sunset. But this technology did get picked up by MSD. And that is how MSDs work. It's the same concept. And that's why MSDs are used on really high performance engines because they're able to fire massive amounts of voltage at once. And actually MSD stands for multiple spark distri uh, disbursement, I believe, distribution. It's one of those two, I always forget. Now, but this leads us now to 1971 where William Kissels filed a patent for an electronic ignition system for Chrysler Corporation. Now the Chrysler system was much simpler than the General Motors system or the Ford system before. And I have the components here. I mean, literally, I have the components here. Uh, it, all, it started with the distributor, which had a magnetic, permanent magnetic pickup here and a reluctor wheel. Now, what happened is that the reluctor wheel would have a high point and a, and a space. And that was, that was set by how many cylinders it had. This is an eight, so there's eight of them. Uh, Slam six would have six. And what would happen is that this going from here to here with the space would create an AC current. And that AC current went to this box, this control box, the ECU box. It would go to here, and this had 12 volts coming from the battery. It would then tell it to go ignite, and then it would tell it would go to the negative side of the coil. And then the positive side of the coil went through a ballast resistor, 0.05 ohms, not a lot, just so the coil wouldn't get fried by full 12 volts. They, they work on a 9-volt system. And Chrysler did this so they could use the same coil as they did on their point systems. Now, this one is a dual-sided, and this one is the one that gets a lot of heat because this is a failure point. And it was, because on top, on the top side, this is 5 ohms, and it used to be to the missing pin on this ECU. They got rid of this pin in 1980 because this 5 ohms was cutting the power to the box by a lot, 
but unfortunately it was absorbing a lot of the 12 volts here. It'd get hot and it would just blow and go bye-bye. So what they did is they changed this box so it would then just need 12 volts to run. They just changed the transistors on the inside. And it's a very simple system, very easy to diagnose. And honestly, the, the ballast resistor is not much of a, an issue at all. I've had one fail on me in 36 years. And I've had one ECU, and it's the old style, that failed on me in 36 years. And when they fail, they get hot, and this melts. It's nasty. But nevertheless, that system was put into effect in 1971 uh, in the 340s. And then in 72, it was an optional. It was standard in every four-barrel car, but optional on every other car. So two-barrel and one-barrel cars got it, could get it in 72. 73, it went across the board. In fact, in 73, the New York Times actually released a story about the patent on it. Kind of neat. In conclusion on this, you know, Chrysler really pushed things forward by making a very simple system that could be used on any level performance car and actually be easily swapped out and diagnosed when, when and if they had an issue. So that forced General Motors and Ford to really rethink and come up with something that could help cars run more efficiently. General Motors came out with the HEI system in 1975. So that was three years after Chrysler. But that's nothing. Ford went hold my beer. Their DoraSpark setup didn't come out to 1977. Now, the only difference with the DoraSpark and the, and the HEI, and I won't go into details, is to actually they used them into the mid to late 80s. Well, Chrysler didn't really use this setup as it was into the 80s at all, which is interesting to think about. They were there first, but then fell very behind. You know, there, there's a little bit of the bizarro history of non-points ignition systems and how there were attempts before Chrysler just had the right guy, Kissel, to design a very simple system that used some existing parts like the ballast resistor and and the coil i mean literally he just made an ecu and he changed the pickup in the distributor not much not much of a change so i mean i hope you got something if you you know i want to hear comments below on ignition systems issues you have or anything else you want me to talk about you know if i missed anything please comment below. I, I read and I do respond to comments and, and I, I enjoy them. Even the ones that are critical, that's fine. Uh, if you got something this, hey, like it. If you liked it a lot, subscribe. Hey, if you but if you like car content, subscribe also because you get more car content by subscribing to my channel. Also, I'm trying to get 10,000 subscribers and I would really appreciate your help if you help me get to there because I can't do that by myself. And as always, if you have a cool old car or something fun to drive, and yes, they're uncovered. I saw comments about me having them covered and talking about them. Uh, you're going to take these out because they're going to make someone's day and it will probably be your own. So I'll talk to you really soon.